Hello, so happy to be here today to talk about digital fitness and the opportunity that it represents for artists and rights holders. I'm Lauren Puffpaff. I'm COO and co-founder of Feed Media Group. And we are a B2B, B2B music platform that powers in-app music for fit tech, retail, digital health, and gaming. And joining me today is Kurt Dubik of SyncFloor. Hi. Hi. I'd love it if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your business as well, and then we'll just jump right into the conversation. Sounds awesome. Thanks so much to you tonight for having us, and thank you, Lauren, for uh, bringing me on this panel. Um, so my name is Kurt Dubik. I'm the CEO and CTO of SyncFloor. We are a B2B platform connecting businesses and creators to great commercial music for all sorts of verticals, including fitness, which we're going to talk about a lot today, um, media, uh, traditional media, and like advertising, film, um, TV, etc., and um, podcasting, uh, gaming, um, and and much more. As as what you know, what's really interesting is seeing how there's such a great proliferation of verticals and therefore opportunity that's um, you know looking to bring great music to lift their narratives and make for better modern digital experiences. And our, our business is all about helping those uh, constituents connect. Amazing, thank you. You know, it's, it's sort of impossible to talk about music and fit tech without thinking about the context of the last couple of years, right? You know, there yeah, were absolutely. three, three major uh, music industry revenue streams that, that really took off in the last couple of years. So gaming, live streaming, and then fitness. And there's been a lot of buzz about the growth in fit tech over the last couple of years, but the numbers actually do really back up the hype. And as you know now, you know there's questions, well, what's happening as people return to in-person? What does the new hybrid look like? And we can delve into that later, but... Yeah. I think it's I think it's important to note that you know the fitness fitness app revenue growth uh, for those that are monetized in the app store is up fifty three percent year over year. It just yeah. you know it's phenomenal it's how pretty, much pretty growth. amazing. Yeah, it's it's yeah. really amazing, and you know it's expected to like global virtual fitness market is expected to grow from it's around six billion now to like. 60 billion in 2027. So it's here to yeah. stay. It's here to stay. We know that. it's here to stay. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, it's, it was really interesting to watch as people thought about, you know, the boom, you know, and we, we talk a lot to people about this idea that, look, if you, if you go back seven years, right, none of these things are, are these, some of these things are gleams in our eye, like as you talk about, you know, whether it's, you know, sort of the rise of, of gaming and the metaverse and Roblox and things like that, or you're talking about fitness and Peloton, so on, like the, you know, or, or even the social audio as a, a concept or, or a big thing, right, those things just weren't there, and then all of a sudden you come to now and you get this explosion in all these verticals or explosion of growth and explosion of need, um, and and you know, for us, you know, as as people who who care a lot about creating more and more opportunity for rights holders in music, that is a great, great place to be. And so, so yeah, absolutely, this is the fun times, as they say. Well, and, you know, and, but this explosion and proliferation of new experiences, connected fitness apps, hardware, you, you name it. I mean. There, I now know of at least four or five smart mirrors that have hit the market. Yeah. And yeah. when Mirror launched, it was you know completely revolutionary. But that prolifer proliferation means that there's more competition as yes. well, right? Yes. And so, so music is absolutely a way to differentiate. That's right. And That's right. yeah, and, and you know, it's it's a increasingly as we're working with our partners in the market, for example, app development shops who are helping people figure out like what should my experience look like. Mm -hmm where everyone is counseling, start with music first. Like you, you get your instructors, you think about your video content and then think about your, your music strategy as well, because it's gonna be so crucial to the experience. And particularly for folks who I think have come in from the tech space initially, mm -hmm. they just didn't really know what it right. looks like to license right. music and what those timeframes look like. So That's right. yeah, there's a lot of you're right. The, the complexity has gone up so much. And that's 
one of the things that we're seeing as we talk to customers is that really they're looking for people to collapse that complexity, right? You know, one of the things that, that we've talked about with some of our customers is that, look, you shouldn't have to build a music infrastructure company in order to deliver a modern digital fitness experience. And they all are like, yes, exactly, right? And you shouldn't really have to understand the complex web of rights, right? And, and which thing your, your stuff is stepping on and who you should negotiate with in order to incorporate music into your digital experience. And so they're really looking for platforms like ours, you know, to, to, to help them deal with that. And, and more than just getting sort of files and paper, right? Like they're like, okay, it's one thing to, to figure out how to give me the license agreements and the, and the digital files, but really I, I don't wanna figure out what it means to ingest that and have metadata around it and create discovery around it and create curation around it and stream it into an experience and use it for recorded experiences and so on and so forth. And so, and so what, really- And what's a takedown? I don't know. And what's a takedown, <laughs> what's a takedown right? You know, there's adds a whole other, you know, sort of degree of complexity. Um, you know, some, to something you were saying just now, which, you know, is that with the competition, I think in some ways, you know, besides the phenomenal growth, the competition is sort of breeding a diversity of opportunity in some sense. You know, mm -hmm. as we talk to customers, um, you know, we have a customer that's a device fitness company, but when you think about what they're looking to do as they go forward, they're actually saying like, well, you take our, you take our screen and you can use it to do yoga or stretching or meditation. And so it's, it's, it's becoming that they're all sort of starting to blend their needs. And that really makes for this diversity of need in terms of genre and, and the music and things like that. And so that's really interesting as well. Absolutely. So talk, talk to me, you mentioned that fitness is an important segment. Have you seen massive growth in the last two years? What else is going on the site? What, what are you guys seeing? Yeah. So, so, you know, it's really interesting for us, you know, our story is, is, you know, in some ways, you know, relatively recent as, uh, as compared to feed, but what, but we're seeing this incredible, you know, I think, quarter over quarter, we're looking at, you know, Q2, Q3, we saw 4X, you know, sort of, uh, you know, growth in terms of the, the fitness micro licenses yeah. that we deliver. And what's, you know, what's really cool is that, you know, initially, you know, sometime last year, we were sort of in the business of creating, um, you know, sort of marketplaces for, you know, film TV advertising, sort of traditional media to get access to great commercial music, particularly from the independent sector um, uh, uh, for, for their productions and to lift their narratives. The, um, you know, we sort of, in some ways, stumbled upon the, the whole thing with fitness in that people came to us and said, hey, you know what, this stuff is really complicated. We know you guys are doing some really innovative stuff in, in this uh, um, are, arena of, of licensing music. You know, can you help us? Can you give us advice? And as we looked at it and we looked at the platform we'd built, we realized, oh, wow, actually we can serve this constituency really, really well, right? And that's what really got us to dig in. And we, you know, we built a pilot around that and then, then started to realize that, you know, there was this groundswell of desire and demand for, for somebody to give them an end-to-end -end great solution that took them through discovery of content, through curation, through licensing that was seamless. And, and especially as it related to, to sync in the sense that, you know, right. when, once you go from sort of live experiences into either, you know, VOD or live to VOD experiences, the complexity goes up so much in terms of what you have to do with respect to licensing and discovery of content that is great in terms of its commercial and cultural relevance, while mm -hmm. still being simple to actually transact on. And, mm -hmm. and that was just exactly in the sweet spot that we were in. And so it's been it's been really incredible. Yeah, I, you know, I, it was such a mess, I would have to say when the lockdowns originally started, you know, the let's say that first three or four months and everyone just suddenly had to transfer to digital and had and a, a lot of the folks in the fitness sector, especially on the smaller end, like, you know, boutique chains right. who were doing a great business and suddenly had to figure out what, what it means to live stream or to do on demand. It, there was just, you know, so many questions around where to start with that and not a lot of good information. Either. No, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Right. So, so that creates the space for you guys to come in and really That's right. you know, help save some businesses, frankly, and, that's right, and, that's right. and certainly and get them on the right path, you know, and, that, yeah. and that's, and that's, that's really important. I think, you know, in the past, you know, in some sense, maybe you could start saying the way past, but the, the, the um, relationship between the music industry and many of these, you know, sort of new experiences that were coming up and trying to, to, to use music in, in all sorts of interesting ways was more antagonistic than not, right? And, and I think that, you know, sort of the, the modern music industry is starting to say, hey, this is all opportunity. Let's figure out how people want to do the right thing. They want to make their stuff work, right? Um, 
and let's figure out how to help them, right? And in helping them help ourselves. Well, and that is exactly our philosophy in the market as well. Mm -hmm. We are, mm -hmm. there's three things we're trying to do. One is to create great experiences for the end user. Two is to help businesses leverage popular music in a way that's sustainable for that business. And then three is to get artists and rights holders paid, right? And right. at the that's end right. of the day, we're an aggregator and we're trying to make things easy and connect that's rights right. holders to businesses. That's what it boils down to. That's right. So I agree. There's definitely, um, I think certainly more embracing of folks like us, like both of our businesses yes, uh, yes. And, and thinking of it more from the perspective of our ability to kind of bring these businesses into the ecosystem, help them understand how it all works and ultimately feed those new revenue streams, right? That's right, that's right, that's right. And, and you know, what we find is that there's sort of education on both ends and that spans verticals, you know, not just fitness, mm -hmm. but, you know, you, you know, we, you know, we, in our, our case, we aggregate, you know, a hundred plus, uh, partners, labels, publishers, distributors in the independent sector. And, you know, including, you know, from very large to, you know, the Believe, TuneCore, Create Music Group folks of the world to, you know, sort of luminary labels like, you know, the Sub Pops and Motor Musics and things mm -hmm. like that, all the way down to, to great emerging uh, labels and publishers. And, and, you know, given that span, you have, you know, sort of a pretty wide array of understanding of like, okay, what are people trying to do out there? What are, you know, sort of the relevant price points to, to attach to with respect to, to those types of licenses? Um, how can we make the flow of licenses just the, the you know, once you've found something you like, right? How, how do you make it so that getting access to it actually is yeah. seamless and actually integrated into the workflows that people have in very, very different verticals? You know, when we, when we started doing work in fitness, it became very clear that we needed a great micro license platform, right? You know, in, in fitness, you want the user to really focus a lot on curating around their, their choreography for, for that class. And once they've done that, you want them to be able to say, great, and I want all of this as a package because that's what they're creating is an overall experience, right? And, and so that's gonna, gonna, you know, sort of span from finding the right stuff and how they fit together, potentially taking parts of the, the content that they want as they sort of build their playlist, you know, start and stop, speed up, slow down, all those kinds of things, right? And, and making it really simple for them to pull that package together and say license. What that means for, for all of our rights holders is that they have to understand a framework that they feel is, you know, sort of appropriate in terms of their remuneration, but very simple, right? In terms of like the way that the license is transacted. And ultimately we, you know, we found a way to make that such that, you know, the, the fitness companies can get what they want done in really simple ways for their workflow. And our rights holders can get paid essentially monthly, right? For a set of licenses where they get a full detail of all of the micro licenses transacted. And what's great about that is that they've seen that movie before. They're like, oh, this looks just like the stuff that I get from my distributor or, or what perfect. have you, right? So it's perfect. Yeah. Well, and so talk to me about how you curate your catalog. Like, what are your <laughs> fitness customers looking for? How do you choose? Music. Yeah, yeah. So, so our, you know, our focus is on the commercial independent sector. So, sort of, you know, all the folks out there in A2I land, you know, they're exactly the, the type of partners that we work with. And, you know, for us, you know, initially, it's just about finding great music because one of the things we truly believe is that as the need proliferates and the diversity of the need proliferates, everybody can can everybody gets an opportunity, right? Because the kind of music that we're seeing being picked up right, are all over the place, right? Because as you know, you know, fitness companies span from, you know, sort of, you know, very well understood, you know, hit bar, like that type of thing, all the way to people who are very method based and therefore the music they want to accompany it is, you know, sort of very much towards the taste of the individual trainers to things that are around meditation, wellness and yoga. So that's very different. And, and so we, what we tell our partners is like, you do you, right? We think that with the discovery engine that we've built and the diversity of need, we'll be able to connect you to opportunity. And so well, we try to bring people I, I, I just have to say, we work with a lot of instructors at FEDFM and instructors have eclectic taste. Like yes, that they do. That's, it. that's, that's the thing, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it's great to see, right? Because I think especially for the independent sector, it's, it's an exciting time to, to sort of be your, yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because as, you know, our curation team tends to think about things from a flow perspective and finding consistency in a mix. Instructors are like, no, what's the beat I need for this segment of the workout and the intensity? And I want, you know, heavy guitar instrumentation like that. They don't, it's not, yeah. a, it's not necessarily about flow of how you would think of a song set. It's the, 
It's yeah, not- yeah, right. that's right. That's right. And, and, and although we're, we're starting to also see, you know, as, the, as things heat up in this space, what we're also seeing is that, you know, you have two things. One, they're, they're just expressing their taste, which is great. Um, but they're also, uh, you know, under a lot of rigors in terms of like the class schedule and the production schedule and stuff like that. And so what they also want are tools that make it really easy for them to say, okay, great, I'm going to the next thing right and so that's that's a really really big deal and so how do we how do we give them up front lots of ways to get ahead of the schedule right and so that's also things that we can provide in terms of software value i think that's a really important point because for a lot of folks they went from an in-person you know sort of live program your spotify playlist and come into the class to oh wait there's a whole workflow here what are the modalities that you're seeing is there a particular standout whether it's hit or bar or boxing we see lots of boxing entrance these days yeah you know um you know for us we're you know i think i think because we're early enough in our stage we're, we're kind of seeing a fair breadth of okay. type but but that's also in some ways because we're actually trying to sample a lot of the different styles so you know so we you know we have you know sort of device-based customers like you know um uh uh working with folks like you know hydro for for rowing stuff or we have um uh you know yoga and meditation so you have folks like open yoga you know we work with uh we work with you know folks like bond or we work with with actually hybrid which is a really interesting thing i think for us to talk about is is this like the class is is a customer of ours and all of them have sort of different ways of sort of looking at the world and looking at what they're trying to make happen um, in their um, and, and how they want to innovate in some sense. And then, you know, the other place that we think is going to be very, very interesting is uh, sort of platforms. What we're seeing out there is that, you know, with the number of individual trainers and small businesses out there, right, they're all seeking platforms that help them build their brand and their business. And so um, in, in some ways, you know, the, the analogy I, I tend to use is, is that they're looking for the Shopify right? That, that sort of takes care of all of these different, you know, sort of pieces they need, calendaring and billing and, you know, um, you know, video consumption and, and things like that. Registration um, and CRM. Registration, ex- exactly. Totally. Ex- exactly, exactly, right? And so, so given that, you know, music is a very natural part of that. And if you can plug into those platforms, you'll see an even greater diversity of the need. And so, so that, you know, those, those are the types of things that we're, we're seeing out there. What about you guys? Yeah, similar. I mean, there's just been so much growth and we, it feels like like there'll be a wave of new boxing startups at one point and then you start to see things kind of shake out and there's some winners right. and losers. And honestly, at this point, there, there's a connected everything, you know, yes. a, a, yes. a connected Pilates reformer, for example, a climbing machine, mirrors, bikes, like that's just the expectation now. So What's, what's interesting, kind of cool to think about from the exerciser perspective, especially as things get more affordable, is how people are piecing together their own ecosystem. Some, some class, to your point, like hybrid model, the convenience of being at home, having an option for strength and an option for cardio. Right. And it's, it's really right. interesting as, as folks start to build out their own sort of home gym or you know, at-home experiences, but, or and, you know, we did a consumer survey June of this year mm. and talked to 500 exercisers, at-home exercisers across the country, and 93% of them said that the music makes or breaks the workout. And right. so no matter, you know, so no matter which device or who you're, who you're um, engaging with for a particular class, it still needs to feel really seamless. That's so, so important. Right. So important. Right. Yeah. What, what, are, what are you guys seeing um, in the sort of uh, VR space? Um, mm. and, and sort of like so gamification of fitness and things like that. Mm-hmm. Well, two things. So on one hand, the, the I almost said traditional connected, connected fitness folks. And that's <laughs> right. 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 Well, things are moving so fast. Been, it's like, well, you know, you're, you're old dudes. <laughs> I know. Folks who've been in the market for a few years are um, really focused on, we're seeing two things in terms of feature sets. One is community building. Yeah. How do you connect digitally? How do you connect when you're in your living room and maybe you want to share a camera, maybe not? What does that look like? And lots of different experimentation there. I mean, clearly folks want people to stay in app and engage with customers there, but there's also a lot to be said for engaging with your community and your instructors on social platforms too. So a lot of interesting connections with social and 
so that's, so community is one thing and then gamification is the other and yeah. you know how do you incorporate whether it's something as simple as like a scenic ride on your bike or you know something much deeper like a uh, choreographed you know like a beat saber type right. of an experience so I, yeah lots of experimentation i would say is where it's at right now i mean yeah. people have been saying for at least two years that fitness is going to be the winner that breaks things open for vr right right well and we're seeing you know supernatural getting bought by meta right is, yeah. is is starting to make some of that come true totally um, i mean and there was so there are two things it's one it's like what is the breakout yeah. game slash experience yeah. and two is from a device perspective and it feels like oculus is getting yeah. getting there so yeah, yeah I, I think yeah. it's really fun and we're just sort of at this point i would say we're not working with anyone necessarily it's broken through but lots of experimentation yeah no that makes sense and you know for us what we're trying to figure out is that you know the the workflow with for for you know sort of vr folks is a little bit different from from everybody else essentially right because you know they're kind of like okay well once it kind of gets into our hands it has to go through our own work for free encoding okay. right and so a lot of the things that we do to make it really simple to go end to end we have to figure out okay how do they sort of cleave that off and get you know mm -hmm. sort of at things a little bit earlier so they can do what they do and then report back into us in terms of um of how it's used um and so that it just introduces some inter interesting additional complexity um for for how we we do things and additional needs in terms of even the way they want to search for content because it has to mm -hmm. sort of match a particular set of characteristics for what right. they want to have happen in game yeah that's that's very interesting i'm curious to like are you in terms of the fitness companies that are coming to you, are they do they typically have a strategy, or are they coming to you to figure that out too? How consultative? Um, no, I, I think it is it is more consultative than not. In that you know, I think they you know they they kind of look out there, and as you say, there's kind of a dearth of information, and so you know, however they sort of got to us or or we got to them, you know, you know, they they first want to get a sense of. Well, what do you think this landscape actually looks like? What do I what do I actually really need to do? And so there's a lot of sort of education back and forth these days in, in terms of how we start conversations with customers. Um, the, you know, I would say that, you know, where it really gets interesting is when is that all, most of them had kind of had had this they didn't really have a notion as we talked about about the complexity once you've gotten into the VOD and live to VOD space or they kind of said well I guess it's so complicated I'm going to have to settle for non-commercial music mm. and so that ends up being the sort of first education point for us and generally is that we say hey look you don't have to settle for that you know right. you know you can get high production value high quality high cultural relevance commercial music in a way that's seamless and easy for you to integrate and affordable. And, it, and I think that's the thing that opens their eyes to like, oh, really? And now, and then, then we kind of tell them about, you know, especially in the commercial independent sector, we tell them about the high production value and cultural relevance of that music. Like, you know, when we say, hey, we're talking about artists, you know, like our, you know, we talk to people about our top, top 50 artists on fitness um, have an average of well over half a million monthly listeners and represent well over two and a half billion streams on Spotify. And then they kind of go, oh, okay. So this commercial music, may, maybe I didn't understand like what, you know, the, the sort of um, the segmentation in the, in the music industry was, right. And then we tell them, well, look, we give you access to this really interesting stuff and we do it affordably and we give you a platform so you don't have to worry about the integration mechanics. And Got so that's- and they, People come to you thinking it's binary. There's either major yeah. label or product or- That's right, production music. Yeah, basic, yeah. Basic, yeah. Basic, that's, okay. They think you know, it's, it's either super expensive, super complicated or not really what we want, but we have to settle. And then we say, no, no, actually, there's, Actually, there's this whole other world, <laughs> right? And, other, and that's what's great for, for folks out there in A2IM land. This, this is opportunity, right? Because there's right. such a great need and you have what people want. You, you check all the boxes. Right. Are you finding that artists through your relationships are, are creating exclusives for fitness? Have you seen much of that? We haven't, but you know, I think, you know, I, philosophically uh, you know as you know i you know, also have a small indie label and in general um you know when i talk to label owners you know and i talk to artists i kind of say look there, you know there isn't a need to kind of reduce your options certainly not today 
right? There's such a proliferation of opportunity. You want to keep option value. And so as much as possible, don't let somebody lock you up, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, 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 if they need your stuff, they want your stuff, they desire your stuff, they're going to do a deal with you anyway, right? But keep, keep your options open. And so that's generally what we tell people. Now, that doesn't mean that sometimes that's the choice somebody wants to make, whether the, the check is right or the opportunities or the, you know, is right or what have you. Um, but, but, you know, we don't see a ton of it, but partly because we tend to build people. You don't have to do that. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? we, we sidebar for a moment and yeah, just my label. <laughs> no, well, so that that's how that's how I got into into the music industry. So you know, in Seattle, I'd connected with a lot of artists in the in the in the Seattle scene, um, and you know, they became friends, close friends of mine. And I kind of was like, well, wow, you know, looking at all the disruption that typically happens in the music industry, um, you know, in the modern music industry, how could I, you know, sort of get involved and help some of the some of these folks that I care about? Um, you know, have a, a better time at being represented and finding opportunity. And so, you know, uh, perhaps naively, I said, oh, we're, I'll start a music group. So, oh, so, I left, <laughs> so, so I left my, left my, left my job, started a music group um, and um, learned a ton, um, you know, felt that, you know, back then, you know, I started it in 2012, I think. So, so back then, you know, what we did, which was being very, um, you know, artist forward in terms of the way we, we brought people on. It was very much, you know, um, uh, it's an investment, not a loan. It's, it's, you know, no lock-in for, you know, period of time or number of, pro you know, projects. Um, right. You know, you, you, you see revenue immediately. So there's no kind of recoup thing going on. Um, artist majority splits. Like we had a whole bunch of things that we felt were, were really, you know, important at the time and were actually different at the time, much more par for the course now, which is great. Right, yeah, in terms of the way those relationships yeah. happen. Um, and so, you know, in learning that, what we really learned though, is that to scale the ability to help the independent ecosystem, right? Uh, the artists, the businesses, the labels, publishers that we love, like the, the, the next way to do that was to actually create infrastructure that connected the ecosystem into opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that became sort of the genesis for, for Sync Floor. Amazing. What a great yeah, start. So, yeah. Brick Lane Records. You know, you know your partners. Yeah, well. yes, I guess we do. We do. We're, we're, one, we're one of them. <laughs> Credibility. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm interested too, there's been a lot of, of sort of buzz around the idea of the instructors as tastemakers moving forward. And I think that's, as, you, as we think about you know, helping especially independent artists scale and finding ways to get like some of the bigger platforms now they've got real audience, right? That's right. So is That's this, right. you know, should this, should we be, is there an opportunity to think about this as a channel for marketing, for launch, for, you know, yeah. exposure in general? I think you're right. I, you know, the, the, it, in some ways it, it happens in ways both big and small, right? So as, as you say, like there are, there are, instructors today that have these great audiences and so they are clearly tastemakers right because they're right. they're really guiding people through an experience and they're telling and the core of that experience includes music um but even on sort of the small level the fact of the matter is that you know when somebody chooses a a boutique fitness company right it's because they really connect as, as you've talked about with that community they connect with that the, really personally with those instructors they connect with the approach you know to 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 fitness and so as part and parcel of that, they will connect with the music that is being put in front of them. And so, so whether they're trying to be tastemakers or not, you know, those, those instructors are being tastemakers because the music they put in front of people becomes sort of part of their bones, right? And, and so, so that's, I think, important to recognize and really see as something that's important to participate in these kind of opportunities, especially for independence. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we're seeing that's interesting is that there's crossover. So if you're a fitness business, you're going to need to advertise, you're going to need to put out social video ads, etc. And so we've seen, you know, sort of crossover of, of requests for like, oh, well, I've been using you to, to do, you know, sort of fitness class stuff. Can I license one of those for one of my marketing videos for, yeah. Like, yeah, totally. yeah, we do that too. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so, so, you know, so I think, I think that's, that's also another thing that will happen more and more. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Well, and we were talking about this earlier a little bit too, but th there's that type of crossover, but then there's also now increasingly each of the platforms is trying to be the central hub for whatever you want to do that day, meditation to yoga to hit to strength, right. you name it. And so finding ways for 
instructors to cross-reference music with each other and kind of right. reinforce things and like thinking of it from a platform perspective, if That's there right. is a, you know, a deal for exposure, I think is super interesting too. And, you know, we, one of the things our curators think about is familiarity versus discovery and what mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. ideal mix looks like, because people like right. familiar music when they're working out, it, it can help you get, you know, to the next phase or, or through a tough push. But at the same time, humans get habituated to things, right? Or it's just a thing our minds do, and which is yeah. probably good in a lot of ways, but you know, having that discovery piece in there is really important right. too. So finding a way to balance those two, expose someone to something new that they're excited about and can easily get the information for That's too. Right. So That's making right. sure that the metadata is visible and they know, you know what they're listening to is important. That's right. And, and we, you know, we, we lean, you know, as, as sort of re aggregate representatives of, of the independent sector, uh, you know, of all stripes, we lean very, very much into discovery because we want to make it really right. easy to connect sort of a, a feel, right, um, uh, into, you know, the right music that really, you know, can propel that yeah. feel. And I think if the instructor feels like this really connects and is the right stuff, then the rest mm -hmm. of the stuff happens naturally in terms of the, the, the fitness client feeling like okay yeah this thing takes me to the level that i want to take me because this is this instructor is really my guide right and so so that you know that's kind of where we come from generally um do you any, any particular recommendations that you make you mentioned for for your partners like exclusives probably stay away from um, <laughs> other other things to think about as they're trying to tap into this market and and take advantage of it um you know i think i there's there's a a little bit of of uh, of knowing that especially in the independent sector, right? The, the, in the independent sector hasn't, you know, as a whole traditionally been in the pick up the phone business, right? Not like the majors, right? The majors people tend to be like, oh, that's the thing, you know, that I'm looking for, and so I guess I have to go call and deal with those people, and it can be really complicated and expensive and blah blah blah, blah right? Yeah. Um, I think it it really behooves independence to continue to be in the hey we're going to get out there and learn about the opportunities and figure out how to you know sort of shape you know the world to to, to what we care about right like that's I, you know we're we're the hustlers in some sense right. right in the independent sector and we need to keep doing that because i think the the proliferation of opportunity makes it such that it benefits the hustler right mm -hmm. and so so you know so continuing to do that i think is is really important and you know there are platforms like ours, you know, um, you know, uh, yours and mine that that are out there to help help those people. So so come chat with us. You know, uh, we're we're trying to we're trying to help you. Yep, makes a ton of sense. Yeah, we're we're really excited about everything that's happening in fitness. We're also you mentioned VR, lots of buzz about the metaverse. What does that? What does social social listening look like in the metaverse? You know, there's I think a good amount. Of experimentation right now and and we also love to work with partners who are coming up with new ideas and you know bringing different sort of creative uh approaches yeah. to to integrations to us as well so i, I think that the hustle is important yeah, <laughs> definitely absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what, so what's what's next for you guys in fitness anything on the horizon that you wanted to talk about um, you know, you know, r right now we're continuing to, as, as we say, learn from, learn from our customers and sort of expand our, you know, feature footprint and things like that. Um, uh, we do see, you know, this idea of supporting platforms um, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, themselves service individual trainers and, and, you know, so the, the Shopify like analogy as being a really important thing for us to, to go after. So we're thinking about that, um, you know, thinking about ways to create sort of not just Sort of a robust end-to-end -end experience, but a robust sort of API-centric platform for our, our partners to be able to leverage both in fitness and beyond is, mm -hmm. is really important to us as well. And so, so those are the things we're thinking about. We I also will say that you know a lot of our customers, the next growth vector for them is is global, you mm -hmm. know, going getting outside the US, yeah. harder for hardware companies, but yeah. you know, the, to the extent that you can think about global rights and the ability yeah. to sure. Um, cross borders that that is something very appealing I would say agreed agreed and and you know our you know sort of our bedrock principle is that you know when we work with partners it's you know sort of partners who have one-stop worldwide rights 
um, for their content. And so that that really makes things a lot easier in terms of us then being able to take the software value we provide and can make those connections in a way that works for both the licensees and the licensors. That, so, yeah, that's huge. Well, we are really excited about the space. Yeah, um, yeah. Too. I think it's been just an incredible learning experience over the last couple of years, see what's coming out next. There's no like there's still lots of growth and opportunity ahead. So I'm um, really excited about the, yeah. the chance to speak with you and, and think about yeah, same your, here. Partners, your rights holders, your customers, and just kind of dig into it a little bit further. Yeah, this has been so fun. Thank you, Lauren. It's been really fun to, to talk with you and learn, learn about what you guys are up to as well. Thanks, Kurt.